Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create both a linear gradient and a radial gradient brush in Procreate. So I'll start by creating a brand new document. It's very important that we choose square. I'm going to lay down some color in my document. I'm going to start with black and I have a fairly thick studio monoline brush. All we're looking at is getting some solid color into the top of the document. So you want to fill that top part of the document with black. Then I'm going to select a sort of mid-gray. And I'll add some mid-gray to my document. Now you could add more grays if you wanted to, but you can probably get away with just a couple. Now we're going to the Adjustments menu and we're going to select Motion Blur. And I'm going to drag up on the document because what I want to do is to get a blur through the document. Now I've got some problems on the left and right hand side where things are not even. So I'll go back to motion blur and this time I'll drag sideways just to enhance that blur effect. And then I'll go back and do another motion blur and this time I'm going to drag up from the bottom. And I would keep working on this document until I had a seamless gradient from black at the top to white at the bottom. And if you drag down a whole lot further, you'll be able to bring gray further down the document. If you drag up, you're going to bring more white into the document. But basically what we're looking for is a good gradient result. Now, if in the process your gradient gets a little bit light, this is what you can do. You can come into the layer here and duplicate it. So I'm just going to make a copy. And you might find by just adding another layer to it that you're getting a darkening effect, but you can also enhance it by setting the blend mode to multiply. And that again will give you a darker result. But what you're looking for is a nice seamless gradient. So having done that, I'm going to click on the wrench icon and I'm going to share and I'm going to create this as a JPEG image and I want to export it by saving it to my camera roll. So I'll just click here on save image and that's all I need to do. So now let's add a new blank layer and I'm just going to turn off the two gradient fill layers because we're ready now to create our brush. So to create a brush, you'll go to the brush panel and you'll click the plus sign. Now I'm going to call this gradient brush. And I'm going to choose insert photo as the shape source because the gradient that I want to use is in my photo album. So let me just go and grab that. For the grain source, I want to swap it from the pro library. So I'm going to scroll down until I find the blank option, which is this one here that is just a black square. So you're going to tap that. So essentially what you're saying is you don't want any grain in the brush at all. And so now we have to make some brush settings. So we're going to start with the stroke. And with the stroke, what we want to do is increase the spacing so that this thing is going to paint just as a stamp brush. So we're going to get a stamp out of it effectively. We don't need anything else in this setting at all, but we will want to set the size of the brush. So I'm going to general and what I want in the size area is I want to increase the size because I want this brush to be able to be used at a fairly large size. So let's see now how we might use the brush. I've got a black color and let's just go and get a monoline pen. I'm going to make a circle. And I'm going to set this up as a reference layer and I'll add a new layer for my color. And I'll drag and drop my color into my document. Now I'll go and get my gradient brush. I'm going to set it to black and white, but I could set it to color also if I wanted to. And I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to turn off my reference layer feature. And I'm going to make my brush a reasonable size and just tap it on the document. Now the brush is a little small, so I'm going to see if I can resize it a little bit bigger. If it doesn't fill your document, that's just fine. Because we put it on a separate layer, we can go to the transform tools and we can just scale up 
the brush so it fits over the artwork. Now this is a gradient and so we're able to use gradients to, for example, blend into our artwork. So I'll go to the gradient layer, tap on the letter N and I can use multiply, for example, or linear burn. And a blend mode like this is going to control how this gradient layer interacts with the layer below. Now I think it's a little bit dark, so I'll just turn the opacity down. But here we have a filled circle that looks as if it's got a gradient fill on it because what we've done is we've got a solid color and a gradient over the top. Now in some circumstances you might want to use a blend mode that does not give a sort of cropped effect. Let's have a look and see how we're going to solve that. So we could solve it by creating a clipping so I'm going to tap here and choose Clipping Mask and that will clip the gradient layer to the layers below. But there are other options that you could use as well. We could go, for example, to the Circle layer and we could make a selection of it. So I'm going to Automatic and I'm going to tap on the Circle. I'm going to invert this because I want selected the outside of the circle, not the inside. I'll come back to the Layers palette come up to the layer that we're working on and I'm going to use a really large brush and I can now erase away the areas outside the circle that have the gradient on them. Now it would help if I had an even thicker brush but you're seeing the result here. So what we're doing is erasing the gradient fill to create a circle but we're using the blue filled layer just as a reference but a reference this time by way of selection, not an actual reference layer. When I'm done, I'll tap on the selection tool again. Now, if we don't want to see the outline, we can just turn that off. And we have a gradient filled circle. So now it's time to have a look at creating a radial gradient. We're going to create our radial gradient in a fairly similar sort of way. I'm going to turn off the layers that are currently visible and add a brand new layer. I have black selected as my color and I have a fairly thick line pen selected. So I'm going to draw out a circle. I'll go to Edit Shape and select Circle. Now I'm going to drag and drop black color into that circle. And now so I can work on just the circle shape, I'm going to tap on the thumbnail image here for the circle layer and I'm going to choose Alpha Lock. Now that means that the color that I'm painting in next can only go in the circle. So I'm going to a lighter gray and a very large brush and I'm going to add some light gray into the middle of the document and then we'll go for white. Now you can add more colors of gray if you wish. You'll just want to paint from black on the outside through to white in the middle. And we're going to apply a blur to this. So let's go to the motion blur. And this time I'm going to be really careful as I drag because I need to create this sort of blur effect. So I'm going to do it multiple times and in different directions. So you don't want to be too quick in terms of trying to get this blur right. You just want to pull the color around. And you're looking for a smooth gradation from white in the middle to black on the edge. And this is a pretty good gradient. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to the transform tool, make sure that magnetics is selected. And I'm just going to enlarge my shape. So this is going to give us a pretty big brush. And again, so that we can use it, I'm going to save it to my camera roll. So I'll choose Share, JPEG, and I'll save the image. I'm going to disable that layer so we're just not confused about what's happening. I'll go to my brushes library and I'm going to tap the plus sign. And we're going to call this radial gradient brush. The shape source is going to be the photograph. So I'll select insert photo. I'll go to my camera roll and grab the image I want to use. The grain source, we're going to swap from the photo library. 
and again we're going to just use the blank grain source and effectively saying we don't want any grain at all on our brush. We'll go back to stroke and we're going to increase the spacing so that our brush is going to paint as individual shapes. Now you can see clearly in the brush preview right now that there's something really wrong with this. The white is supposed to be around the outsides and in the center and that's not the case, it's black. Well if we go back to our source we can invert the shape. So I'm going to tap here on invert shape and when I do that the brush preview now looks correct with white in the very center of the brush and we're not seeing the square outlines. So I'm going back to stroke so I'm making sure that I have the spacing set correctly and if I want my brush to be able to be painted quite large I'll go to general and I'm going to set my size limit so I'm going to increase that quite considerably. We can test that out in the document now by just grabbing a color. The brush that we just created is selected and so I'm just going to tap to paint that. Well. Let's go and find a layer to actually paint on. Okay, so it's not painting very large. Let's try a larger size. If that's not large enough, we can go back into the brush settings and just increase the general value here to a larger size. And now the brush is painting at quite a large size, certainly bigger than the current canvas. So let's have a look at a second example of using that radial gradient. I have a line art drawing here. All the line art is on one layer. So I'm going to set that up as a reference layer so that I can drop color into it. I'm going to create a new blank layer on top and let's go and get a sort of pink color to use as our ice cream color. So I'll just drag and drop that into this area and the reference layer has taken care of making sure that the color is just dropped into the right place. So let's add another layer. This time I'm going to turn off the reference layer feature. I'm going to put my gradient on this layer. So let's go and get the gradient brush. And I'm going to choose a lighter color. And I'm just going to dot to create my brush stroke. So a single brush stroke. Now it might be apparent immediately as to what's happening here. I'm just going to turn off those other layers. But what's happening with our radial gradient is that the white in the middle is showing as transparent, not as a white color. And so we're seeing the background through it. So it's a little difficult to use this, for example, to enhance the layer below because there's a great hole in the middle of it. So this is what we're going to do to solve the problem. First of all, I'm going to the layer that has the radial gradient on it and I'm going to the selection tool. I'm going to make sure that automatic is selected and I'm going to tap on the outside area. So on the outside of the radial gradient so that I have the outside selected. Now this is not the area I actually want to select. I want to select the other bit, but the other bit's going to be really hard to select. The outside was really easy to select. So having done that, I'm going to tap on invert and that just inverts the selection. So now the area that's selected is the radial gradient itself and not the outside. So let's go back to the layers. I'm going to add a brand new layer. I'm going to select white as my color because I actually want to fill this with white. I'm going to select my monoline brush and make it really large. And I'm on my brand new layer and I'm just going to color in white. And this is going to act as a backing behind the radial gradient. So first of all, I'm going to turn my selection off. Now I'm going back to the layers palette. I'm just going to invert these layers. So I'm just going to reverse them. And now you can see that the radial gradient itself has a fill, the white fill behind it. Now having done that, I can just merge these two layers. So I'm going to grab both of them and squeeze with my finger to merge them to a single layer. So this is now my gradient filled shape and I can turn my ice cream back on. And in this case, I want to blend my gradient in with the layer below. I also want to crop it to the layer below. So I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and to crop it, I'm going to click clipping mask. And what that does is it clips the radial gradient to the shape of the layer below, which is the ice cream shape. 
and now I can experiment with blend mode. So you might get some value in the darkening. You definitely will get some value in the lightning areas and you may get some value in the contrasty areas. So I'm thinking something like overlay is probably going to work best or pin light. Pin light's pretty good too. So let's get out of the blend modes and go back to the gradient itself. Now I have the gradient layer selected so I'm going to the transform tool and this allows me to size the gradient and position it where I want it to be in the image. So for example if I want the gradient more to the top left of the shape I can place it there. You can also use the distort tool to distort the gradient if you wish and just place it exactly where you want it to be. So there are lots of things that you can do with these gradients once you've actually created the gradient brush and once you've got the gradient brush of course it's there for all time. For this one I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit just to give it a little bit of a shine. So there's another way that you can use the radial gradient brush. Of course now you've got a radial gradient brush and also a linear gradient brush that you can use to add highlights and effects to your work in Procreate. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned things about Procreate of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.